Uh, if you could start off with a brief opening statement, then we'll uh, go ahead to questions. Yeah, thanks, John. Just um, Ben just got off the practice field, and uh, teams are working hard, getting ready to play in this game. Really looking forward to uh, going down to New Orleans and playing in the Sugar Bowl. It's uh, what an honor uh, to be going down there. It's such a great city, and uh, you know, certainly wish we were spending more time in that city and, and getting to know it. Uh, been down there a couple of times. Went down there for a Super Bowl, and uh, just unbelievable culture and, and great people. Um, so it'll be a different experience, but uh, we're still excited nonetheless and excited to play against a great opponent, you know, rematch from last year. So the preparation has been great. Uh, everyone had a, uh, you know, as good a Christmas as we could possibly have not able to really be around our families, but, um, but the guys have, you know, overcome a lot this year. And uh, now we have to finish the race. we got to finish it, it strong and looking forward to continue the preparation as we head to Friday night. First question will be from Austin Ward from Letterman Row. Ryan, uh, you said last week you thought Justin would be fine. He said he'll be fine by Friday. Have you had to do anything with that thumb to hold him back or limit him? And do you have any concerns about what he could be able to do on Friday night? No, no, I think I think he'll be fine. Next up will be Stephen Means from Cleveland.com. Hey, Coach. Uh, as a quarterback from a quarterback and now as a play caller, when you're going up against a team where you know they have guys who can get consistent pressure up the middle of the, up the, middle of the line, you know, how does that you know, change your approach, maybe the things you have to think about as a quarterback? And then now as a play caller, how does that maybe change your approach a little bit to how you call plays? Well, I mean, this defense is, is second in the, in the nation in sacks. They, they create a lot of disruption, like you said, uh, really good players and really good schemes. So, um, you know, they've, They've done it against just about everybody they've gone against. So we got to understand that. We got to understand the patterns. We we got to do a great job in firming up protection. Quarterbacks got to understand that. And, um, and you know, it just comes down to preparation, understanding the different patterns that you're going to see, knowing that you're going to see some things that um, maybe you haven't seen before. And that's part of it. Um, but and, and they know us very well. Um, you know, they um, you know always have really good schemes. So. We'll have to uh, continue to do a great job of pairing so that you know, when we get out there on Friday night, you know, we're, we're anticipating as opposed to reacting. Next, we'll go to Tim May. Yeah, you know, it's, fr it's funny, Ryan. I think I asked you the same question last year, but I want to ask it again. Uh, when you're going against a defense, of, uh, a defense uh, led by a coordinator like Brent Venables, who has this huge reputation, et cetera, justly deserved, uh, does it, peak you and your staff even more to, to sort of figure it out and uh, go to battle against something like that. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's one of the best defensive coordinators in, uh, in college football. And, um, you know, he does a great job calling the game, um, you know, seems to always know exactly what the other team is doing in terms of uh, the plays that they're running each play. And, um, you know, seems to, you know, call the right, defense in, into that play a lot and uh, you know why that is you know I don't really know but I, I can tell you that uh, he's been doing it for a long time and it's a good challenge thanks man yep we'll go to Ralph Russo from the Associated Press hey Ryan um, wonder, you know, you've talked a little bit about this um, about how the players have had to sacrifice so much sacrifices really from everyone um, have you sensed stress from from them throughout this? And, and how do you deal with that as a coaching staff? Like a different kind of stress that you would normally, you know, deal with in a normal in a normal year. Yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely different stressors that are going on for sure, and and they're they're coming from different areas. The stress of um, living a different life than you lived last year, and all the different things that come with it. Not being around your family, not being able to socialize, not having fans, not receiving the rewards of hard work, um, you know, games being canceled and handling disappointment. I think all that stuff adds up. Um, I think the fact that, you know, they really had to stay in isolation for the most part. And, um, and then I think there's also the stress of the body, you know, and the emotional toll this season's taken. I think that for some guys who have done everything right um, and practiced throughout this whole time, while others have, um, you know, missed practice, you know, and, and the amount of uh, people that have missed practice in the last month alone here 
is staggering. And so those who have practiced every day, that stress uh, load adds up on them as well. So I think, like you said, all those things add up to where they're at right now. Now, uh, some way it calluses you and makes you stronger. And that's a good thing too. I want to go to Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports. Dennis, unmute, please. Sorry about that. Uh, Ryan, I wonder if you could reflect on the circumstances of how you got to Ohio State. It was, you know, it was after that 31 to nothing loss to Clemson where Urban kind of retooled the staff. If that doesn't happen, are you there? And because obviously you've flourished since you got to Ohio State. Yeah, I was, uh, I was with the 49ers at the time and had a few conversations with, with coach and, um, you know, jumped at the opportunity to come to Ohio State, not knowing exactly what was in store. Certainly didn't in my wildest dreams think I'd be sitting where I am right now. Um, but I guess that's college football. And uh, it's, it's been a blessing and learned so much about what Ohio State is, what the Buckeyes mean to so many people throughout the country what winning at a high level means um, and just blessed to be around such great people as Gene Smith and all the people here who strive for excellence. And it's, it's been great. You know, our family loves it here and uh, you're right. I mean, sometimes I wake up and, you know, you just have to pinch yourself a little bit because it wasn't that long ago that, uh, you know, we would never thought of being in a situation like this, but, but a lot of that has to do with the people that are around you. You know, we have great assistant coaches and great players and great administrators here. And that's, um, that's what makes this place great. Next will be Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, um, in a normal bowl, bowl season, you guys would typically be there a few days in advance of the, of the game and you'd have all these festivities and the team would partake in some of that stuff. This year is obviously different. Have you tried to recreate some of that going into this game or is it just entirely different and just a game? What is that like? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been very different for a lot of reasons. One, there hasn't been that much of a lead up time. Usually you have at least three weeks, you know, um, at least two weeks, you know, this, this is close. This was quick. I mean, this was, I guess, 12 or 13 days. Plus you had Christmas in, in between. So there hasn't been a lot of, uh, you know, downtime that way. And really we're not able to do a whole bunch of um, stuff together that, um, you know, other than practice because of everything that's going on and, you know, uh, certainly all the positive tests that have, that have you know, uh, come up over the last month. And so we've taken a lot of precautions that way. And so it's going to be more just like a game. You know, we're going to go down there the night before and, uh, you know, get some rest, get to the hotel, uh, wake up, you know, get ourselves ready to go and then, and then go play the game Friday night. So, yeah, it's one of those, you know, things that we're just going to have to sacrifice this year is, is the bowl experience. And when you think about it, uh, it's, it's kind of a downer because you'd love to spend a week in New Orleans and, uh, all those things that come with a bowl game. And that's part of the reward that I was talking about that these guys, um, you know, it's been taken from them this year. Um, whether it's fans in the stands, whether it's the recognition or whether it's the number of games you play and in, in, in a bowl experience, you know, those things do add up. Uh, you can say they don't, but they do. And it uh, doesn't mean you need to sit around and cry about it, but um, it's something you need to be aware of. And uh, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll – once we get down there, we'll try to do everything we can. Uh, but in the meantime, it's it's you know getting getting ready to play the game, and it's all preparation here. Next will be Nathan Berg from Cleveland.com. Hey Ryan, it, it's rare, I think, even for a player of, of Justin's magnitude to to maybe get another chance to to go up against um, you know one of the the only team that's beaten him to this point, at least at Ohio State. I guess just how do you see this game playing into the the legacy he could leave here um, and, and just the opportunity that's ahead of him as a, a competitor? Well, I think he he left that field wanting another shot. Now he has another shot. And he's not the only guy that's, that felt that way. There's a lot of guys on our team who felt that way. And you would have never thought that you're going to make it all the way back here to go play in this game. And the journey was so uh, strange to get here. But here we are. And now we have an opportunity to go go play him again. And this is the reason why uh, everybody worked so hard during that off season was to get to this opportunity. So now we've got to go make the best of it. Um, do I know what it means? I don't know. I mean, it's an opportunity to go play Clemson. And if we win, we go play for the national championship uh, with, with everything that's gone on this season. And that's what, that's what matters. And, you know, has it been normal? No, 
Um, but here we are. We asked for this opportunity, and now we got to go. Next will be Andrea Adelson from the ACC Network. You mentioned practice a little bit ago. I'm just wondering if uh, Chris Olave and some of the other players who were out against Northwestern have returned uh, to practice. And how much of the, if you've got the whole team together practicing, how much that will help now as you prepare for Clemson? One of the challenges for the last month has just been, like you said, the, the amount of guys that have been in and out uh, for whatever reason, you know, whether it's been for the virus or, uh, you know, guys just, you know, being out because of injuries, um, you know, the numbers are, are off the charts. So that, that has been a major challenge is trying to prepare for games, but having guys come in and out of stuff. Um, we have got a bunch of guys back. Guys are starting to practice now and, and um, you know, it'd be good to get some of these guys back to, to play on Friday night. Um, but it's, it's not like you just throw them back in there and they're just going hundred miles an hour again. You know, there's a, there's a ramp up to it. You know, they haven't really they didn't do anything for 10 days and they had to pass their cardiac test. And then you have to kind of ease them into it, uh, especially the skill guys because of soft tissue injuries. And um, I think we're doing as good a job as anybody of uh, having a really good protocol on how to get them back safely to play. Uh, but, it, but it certainly has been a major challenge, you know, guys in, guys out. And like I mentioned before, that puts a lot of stress on the guys who are who are in there, who are taking the reps in practice because you have to practice to get better. And uh, and we haven't had the, the luxury of playing in, you know, 13 games leading up to this. So we have to continue to practice. So that's that's been one of the challenges this year. And uh, it's something that our guys have embraced. It hasn't been easy, but but they've overcome it. And, um, and here we go. Next up will be Bill Landis from The Athletic. Hey, Ryan, uh, you, you've talked a lot since you've been here about your offense and, and staying aggressive. Um, I'm just wondering if does aggressive always have to mean throwing the ball? Can a team be aggressive running the ball? And, or just like, what's your idea, I guess, when you think of that? And, and why is that the preferred disposition, I guess, for lack of a better word, for your offense? No, I don't think it's preferred. I mean, I think the idea is to score. Um, it's like in the big, you know, the Big Ten championship game, we ran for, I think, 330 yards in a game. Uh, or I forget exactly what the number was. So, I mean, we're... Um, you know, we're always going to strike a balance. We always want to do that. And I think when you look at the numbers, I think they would probably uh, they would probably show that that's, that's what we have. We have a pretty good balance. I don't know what our, our passing and, and running numbers are right now. But we always have to put pressure on the defense. And uh, throwing the ball is a huge part of that. And that also opens up the run game. Um, and I think that's part of how you attack teams. And you know, if you're not executing at a high enough level, then you need to get that fixed. But whenever you start, uh, you know, not calling it aggressively, that's when, you know, bad, bad things happen. You know, you lose confidence, and, and that's not the way we're wired. I mean, we're going to go out there and try to score as fast as we can and uh, try to score as many points as we possibly can. But at the same time, keeping that balance and controlling the ball. Uh, so whatever that is, and then we'll look at the, 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 you know, schematically what gives us our best chance. You know, in certain teams, they, they load the box, and you have to throw the ball. Um, you know, we didn't throw the ball as efficiently in the, in the last game as we would like to have uh, missed a few opportunities. Could have been a bigger number, but it wasn't. So that's what well, you got to learn. You got to get better at it. Um, and so we're always looking for that balance. And, and being aggressive is, is both. You know, it's sometimes playing with tempo. It's sometimes taking shots. And, um, but at the end of the day, if you're forcing the team to, you know, to defend the entire sideline and run and pass and the quarterback run, I think that's when you put the most stress on the defense. And if I can follow up on that just just quickly, last year in this game, you guys kicked two field goals from the five yard line, and that would seem to run a little counter almost everything you just said. And I'm, I'm just wondering how those two field goals have sat with you over the last year as you've sort of framed your your mindset for this offense this year. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to you know go back and uh, replay the game last year, but one of the one of the issues was field goals in the red zone and not scoring touchdowns down there. We had one call back. We had a drop. We just it, it didn't didn't happen. So, you know, we got to make sure that you know we're scoring touchdowns when we get down in there. Um, you know, but in, in games like this, we also got to be smart. And um, you know, if, if our defense is playing well, and you know, kicking field goal is something you got to do at that time. You got to do that. I mean, you can't just be reckless either. Um, you know, we also went for it on fourth and one and threw a touchdown. <laughs> um, I think it was in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, we're, we're always going to be aggressive, but at the same time, you can't be reckless. Thanks. 
Yep. Next is Rob Oler from Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Ryan. How important is this game as a program marker? You guys are right there. You're up 16 and 0. You, it slipped away, but you know, you've got Alabama and Clemson. How important is it that it is Clemson and that you have a shot to make a statement? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that, Rob. You know, I would say, you know, in a normal year, I'd probably have a better feel. I, I don't know. You know, I, I think this is more about these, these, this team and these guys on this team and the leaders and what they've done and their story. The story that, that these guys have and their journey to get to right here and what, and what the, the final chapter or two is going to be. That, that's more to me what this is about. This is about a bunch of guys who have just been through so much and had the season canceled and restarted and then games canceled and here they are right back to where they started when, you know, a year ago to play Clemson again. It's just an amazing story. And I think it's more about them than it is like a statement about, you know, where we are. Um, you know, we'll see if we can all come up for air and, and maybe reflect on that in the off season. But this is more about our culture and our team and, uh, I really would love for these guys to have something at the end of the end of the season, a big ring to show for everything they've done because they've sacrificed so much. And I think it's that's that's really the story to me. We'll now go to David Hale from ESPN. Hey Ryan, given all you just mentioned, this might be a difficult question to answer. Um, I know Dabo has been fairly outspoken about the idea that playing. Uh, 11 games as they have is different than playing the six that you have. Uh, and when you compare this year to past seasons, do you feel like your team is in a different place having only six games under their belt at this point in the year, um, physically, emotionally, mentally, or, or has the toll of all of the other stuff been so great as to sort of ameliorate any level of, of differentiation there? Yeah. I mean, everything about this season is different, you know, from the amount of games we played to, um, to all the above. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know where to start. I mean, we could talk about it for an hour. But yeah, everything about it's been different. And uh, to sit here and, and tell you exactly, um, you know, where we are compared to years past, um, no, I mean, it's, it's totally different. Everything about it's different. The way we practice, the way we eat, the way we meet, the way we travel, the way everything, uh, preseason camp to all of the above. So this is, this is a different season in all uh, areas. Next, we'll go to Jeremy Birmingham from Letterman Row. Hey, Ryan, two-parter here. Um, first of all, with, with everything that Justin went through in the last year, the, the way last season ended, to the Indiana second half to Northwestern, how do you stop him from trying to do too much against Clemson when obviously there's so much riding on his shoulders? And then secondarily, how much did Justin change you as a coach in the time that he's been at Ohio State? Well, I think the first thing is you just have to win the game. And I think one, one thing that happens a little bit at Ohio State is people want to uh, want you to win a certain way here. And I think sometimes that's a little dangerous. Um, but right now, there's only one goal, win the game. doesn't matter if you win 6-3. to three, doesn't matter if you win 52-51. Just win the game. And I think that has to be the approach and not – you know, are we going to beat a team by, you know, 28 points? Are we going to throw for 500 yards and, and you know, be in the Heisman Trophy watch or whatever? It's just, it's win the game. You win the game, you move on. And that's what matters. Uh, so I think that's the focus. And uh, no, it's, it's been fun. Uh, you know, work every time you have um, different quarterbacks come in, you learn a lot about yourself and uh, you build different relationships and certainly have a special appreciation for Justin as a competitor and as a person. We have time for one more question. We'll go to Kyle Rowland from the Toledo Blade. Hey, Ryan. Um, the fan bases of these two teams to totally view it as a rivalry. I was just curious kind of what you thought and the people in the Woody think. Um, clearly, you guys recruit against each other. You've played in a lot of high-stakes games. Just what do you think of this Ohio State Clemson series? Well, I mean, you know, it's the second year we're playing them in a row, and, and they've won – two national championships here. I think it's four of the last five years they've been in it. Um, I think they've won six ACC championships, if I'm correct. I mean, they've, they've um, you know, been right at the top of the game for uh, almost a decade now. So they're, um, they're up there. And then, you know, when you look at where Ohio State's been in, in the Big Ten and, um, you know, playing in the CFP and, and um, you know, our games against Clemson, um, you know, if we continue to win, 
you know, we're, we're probably going to run into Clemson or Bama along the way. So, you know, rivalry and we're not the same conference, but certainly if we move on, then, you know, we're going to, we're going to see these guys. And so it's, it's always great to get to this point and play against a great competitor like Clemson. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. Come visit us over at BuckeyeGrove.com for all the best Ohio State information on the web.